Hey guys, this is Kaijin Hunter, and I thought it would be fun to share some random, amazing, cool little known facts about Monster Hunter games that I find in older interviews and publications here in Japan. Maybe this video will become a series, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Without further ado, let's kick this off with 10 amazing neat facts. Number 1, Monster Hunter was originally planned to be an online-only game. While this obviously didn't end up being the case, many parts of the game design came from that era of planning. For example, they had hunters carve their rewards at the end of a hunt because they wanted to reduce the amount of objects they had to refresh on each player's screen. So instead of dropping items during a hunt often, they just had the players carve it at the end. Number 2. We know that the OG, first monster ever created was Rathian, but what about weapons? Well, it turns out the first weapons made in Monster Hunter were the Great Sword and the Heavy Bowgun. The need for lighter versions thus gave us the Sword and Shield and Light Bowgun, and finally the Lance for guarding, and the hammer for being a heavy weapon they can use while still moving around. That's right, the original game only had six weapons. Dull blades were later added in Monster Hunter G. Longsword, Gunlance, Hunting Horde, and Bow were added in Monster Hunter Dose as the flashier cousins of the Great Sword, Lance, Hammer, and Bowgun. And the Switch Axe was added in Monster Hunter Tri, with Insect Glaive and Charge Blade making their debut in Monster Hunter 4. And the Medium Bowgun from Monster Hunter Tri will just forget it ever existed. Number 3. The Dual Blades were originally going to be an exclusive feature for the Western release of the original Monster Hunter. They weren't even going to be their own weapon class either, they were just a spin-off weapon tree from the Sword and Shield. Capcom was being pressured to release a greatest hits budget price version of Monster Hunter, but they were already adding in new content post-release, and Fujioka was even making the animation himself for the Dual Blades. So they decided, you know what, instead of a cheaper version, which they didn't want to do, they would make an upgraded version. Something great and a harder rank that took a lot of guts to take on, thus the G rank, and Monster Hunter G was born. The tradition of coming out with an upgrade expansion would stick with the series going forward, and we have the eagerness of the team at Capcom to keep building stuff after the game is done, to thank for it. Number 4. The initial concept of Monster Hunter Portable, from the Portable series director Ichinose, was to expand on the feline aspect of the game. This is where the feline kitchen started. They probably would have done more in this title, but they only had 8 months and about 20 people to port over the original Monster Hunter to the PlayStation Portable. Feline though would remain a key word for all the portable games however. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite brought Palicos, Monster Hunter Portable 3 started to really push the envelope with more feline weapons and gear, and Monster Hunter Generations even gave us a playable Palico in the form of a Prowler. Number 5. Did you know that in Monster Hunter Dos, Camellios had an attack that would cause you to lose your ability to use the chat function in the game? They even played around with bringing this idea back in Monster Hunter for Ultimate, where it would stop you from being able to use your auto chat, but they decided that users would just be confused and think the game was bugging out, so they scrapped the idea. Number 6. Monster Hunter Tri was originally announced and planned for the PlayStation 3. They announced it on May 9, 2006, but a year and a half later, on October 10, 2007, Capcom shocked the industry and announced that due to the large development costs on the PlayStation 3, they had moved its development completely over to the Nintendo Wii. Number 7. At its peak, Monster Hunter Tri on the Wii had just under 100,000 simultaneous users online. Series producer Ryozo Tsujimoto kinda regrets not calling up his friends and asking them to go online because apparently they were just a few hundred shy of that 100,000 mark. I'm sure they busted it with Monster Hunter World. Number 8. One of my favorite games in the series, Monster Hunter Feline Village, the adorable laid-back game featuring just the felines, was developed by none other than the hardcore game studio From Software. The director on the game, Kazuhiro Hamatani, was the lead game designer on Bloodborne. Just goes to show you how wide the talents are of the staff at From Software. Number 9. In Monster Hunter Tri, they removed the dual blades, gun lance, hunting horn, and the bow from the game. But after getting apparently a ton of complaints to Capcom, the team vowed to never reduce the number of weapons again. Except they forgot with Prowler. So in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd, while they were originally going to add a new weapon to the game, they decided instead to focus on bringing back the 4 and to add in new features. Perhaps it all worked out in the end though because the Dull Blades got the Arc Demon mode, Gunlands got the Full Burst attack and the ability to charge up shots, Hunting Horde got the ability to play songs while attacking, and the Bow got the Arc Shot and Exhaust Coatings. Portable team, I love you. And finally, number 10, Monster Hunter Tri 3D World. The game was going to be a 3DS port of the Wii game, Monster Hunter Tri, but with a bunch of new content. They even had a logo for it, apparently. 
but just two months before its announcement, Ryozo Tsujimoto decided that they made so much new content that the game should just be called Monster Hunter Tri-G, and they scrambled to change the logo and the game came out just six months later on December 10th, 2011. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm having a lot of fun going through all these past uh, interviews. There's tons of interesting little tidbits, but nothing really cohesive for me to put together one solid video on one topic. So if you guys like this video, I might make a series when I get another 10 cool things that I can share. Let me know down in the comments below if you knew any of these, if some of them are new to you, and what you thought. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy hunting.